All right, guys, welcome back to the Red Gat channel. Today's rant video is brought to you by harvardmagazine.com. And I will show you the image um, to give you a feel for this. Risks of homeschooling, which by the way, it's April 2020. You'll notice the date. And that's on the website. I mean, I printed this, but it's it shows that date on the website. Okay. This article really ticked me off. And uh, you're, you're going to find out why pretty quick. I'm going to skim through it and read a few passages. So the reporter, I guess, whatever, is interviewing this lady named Elizabeth Bartholet. If I'm pronouncing that right, I don't really care at this point. Elizabeth Bartholet. Um, public interest professor of law and faculty director of the law school's child advocacy program sees risks for children and society in homeschooling. Really? Do tell us more. And recommends, you ready? A presumptive ban on the practice. Really? Homeschooling, she says, not only violates children's right to a meaningful education and their right to be protected from potential child abuse, but may keep them from contributing positively to a democratic society. This lady doesn't even know that we live in a representative republic. She says this more than once, by the way. We're going to continue reading because uh, it gets better from here. But we'll get back to that in a minute. We have an essentially unregulated regime in the area of homeschooling, she asserts. I'm not even going to respond to that yet because it gets a lot better from here. Surveys of homeschoolers show that a majority of such families, by some estimates up to 90%, are driven by, you ready? Here it comes, conservative Christian beliefs and seek to remove their children from mainstream culture. Who'd have thought in 2020 that conservative Christian believers would want to get their kids out of public schools or even private for that matter if you want to go that way go that direction she notes that some of these parents are quote extreme religious ideologues end quote who question science and wait for it promote female subservience and white supremacy. <laughs> She's painting homeschool parents all with one broad stroke and saying that they generally are not only conservative Christians who seek to remove their children from mainstream culture, but they also promote female subservience and white supremacy. Okay, yeah, we're, this is insanity, but this is about to become hilarious. Watch this. Children should grow up exposed to democratic values. There it is again. Ideas about non-discrimination. Tolerance of other people's viewpoints. Dude. That's hilarious. Like, this lady is obviously anti-Christian and anti-conservative, right? Which puts her in the liberal perspective of things. But she's going to preach to us about, you know, if, if, we're, if I'm the demographic, right? Uh, <laughs> about non-discrimination? You mean, like, how you discriminate against Christian bakers for not wanting to bake a 
cake? <laughs> you mean the the ideological beliefs that white men are the problem with our society? You mean like so these cons anyway, okay. Yeah, all right. That was hilarious. Let's continue. From the beginning of compulsory education in this country, we have thought of the government as having some right to educate the children so that they become active, productive participants in the larger societies. <laughs> Wait, let me finish. This involves, in part, giving children the knowledge, the knowledge to eventually get jobs and support themselves. You mean like how most public schools have now eliminated shop class? <laughs> yeah, you're really helping us out there, champ. Okay. I'm trying to make this quicker than it is. I'm already running long. The issue is, do we think that parents should have 24-7 essentially author authoritarian control over their children from ages 0 to 18. I think that is dangerous. End quote. It's dangerous for parents to have control over their children. You heard that? Yeah, gee, it sounds almost like she wants the government to control our children from the cradle to the grave. What ideology likes those notions? We'll get back to that in a minute. Let me finish this quote, this paragraph. Quote, I think it's always dangerous to put powerful people in charge of the powerless and give and to give the powerful ones total authority what you mean like the public school system having total power over all the children you mean like when the public school boards have teachers removed forcefully by the police from town hall school board meetings because they're asking questions and making statements like you know the whole point of having town hall meetings and school board meetings is to where the parents the teachers the public can express their opinions so but it's okay if those authoritarian powers have power over your children while you're not around and they also have power over the parents, apparently, here lately. All right, let, I got to wrap this up because I have to read some other stuff in a moment. I think an overwhelming majority of legislators and American people, if they looked at the situation, would conclude that something ought to be done. Yeah, because obviously we don't want to have parents having control of their children. Sick freak. All right. I'm trying to do this fast, but I have some quotes here for you I want to read, and then I want you to guess who the author is and what ideology that author comes from. You ready? Let's go. First one. The state must declare the child to be the most precious treasure of the people, as long as the government is perceived as working for the benefit of the children, the people will happily endure almost any curtailment of liberty and almost any deprivation. Number two, when an opponent declares, quote, I will not come over to your side, end quote, I calmly say, your child belongs to us already. What are you? You will pass on. Your descendants, however, now stand in the new camp. In a short time, they will know nothing else but this new community. Same verbiage she used, community. Number three, if the older generation cannot get accustomed to us, 
we shall take their children away from them and rear them as needful. Oh, really? Okay. Number four. It is not the task... Well, I'm sorry. Let me stop there. Those first three, would you care to guess the author? It's Adolf Hitler, in case you didn't already pick that up. Sound familiar? Sounds a lot like what she was saying. All right, let's read this one. It is not the task of an elementary school to impart a multiplicity of knowledge for the personal use of the individual. It has to develop and harness all physical and all mental powers of the youth for the service of the people and the state. The only subject that has any place in school curriculum is that which is necessary to achieve this aim. All other subjects springing up from obsolete educational ideas must be discarded. And if you'd like to know where that came from, that was a Nazi directive on elementary education circa 1940. Google it. One more quote. Give me just one generation of youth and I'll transform the whole world. Care to guess? That would be Vladimir Lenin. And if you don't know who that is, I am appalled. And you need to fix yourself desperately. Google Vladimir Lenin and then tell me what Nazi is actually the abbreviation for. Two pieces of homework assignment. Do that, get back with me, comment, share below. Have a blessed day.